What's up guys, Jake and back some Fruit of Grisaia. We're still in the middle of this really boring story that our character is telling. And let's, let's just dive back in. Had 30 minutes passed when the man came to himself. Gross. The rain had, ironically enough, finally stopped. His vision had largely recovered. When he looked around, he saw his companions all just as filthy with mud. Okay, that's hot. Hey, shorty, you still alive? Okay, that's a weird thing to say to another human. The sniper was still scurrying along the ground when that voice called him. I thought he was unconscious. What? It belonged to a black man who joined the army at the same time as him. Cool. They'd been in the same squad in their training days as well, and the black man, I wish we could give him a name, was his closest friend in the platoon, and yet we still don't know his name. His greeting was casual, as always. <laughs> give me a break. The man reshouldered his beloved rifle and told his friend about the hand grenade accident. That voice from the next foxhole. The grenade he handed over in response. Moments later, the explosion. The man angrily spat out the details of his brush with death through another's stupidity. The black man listened in silence. Seriously, we could just give him a name, you know. When the story was over, after a brief pause, he finally spoke. Huh? The hell are you talking about, shorty? The black man said his story was impossible. Come to think of it, of course it was. The man was the unit's bird man. The rear guard. The end of the line. Usually, the bird man marched 10 to 20 meters behind the squad. There was no way an ally would have been encamped only 2 or 3 meters from his position. Yeah, you're right, that does sound impossible for someone to be near him. Even concerning his movements to change his firing position, he couldn't have met anyone until he broke in, until... Until the unit broke into retreat. I can fucking read. I, I mean, let's just say you're out and some jackass dropped a grenade in his own foxhole. Okay, who was it? I don't know, that's why it's like a scary story, right? When the man looked around his surroundings, only the squad's other members were accounted for. A few were lightly wounded, but clearly none of them had been on the ex receiving end of a grenade blast recently. So, who the hell did you give that grenade to? Who the fuck cares? The story sucks. In response to his friend's words, a shiver ran down the man's spine. After rejoining the main force and completing his report, the man told his story to a grizzled veteran. The sergeant major has an explanation of sorts for him. That place is right around the side of an old battle where many, many Americans died. Ah! Among them were many wounded who had been cruelly, slowly butchered by gorillas with spears and bayonets. And some who reached to the grenades on their waist and pulled the pin rather than be tortured to death. So it was a ghost. So in the end, who had taken the man's grenade? Perhaps a lingering spirit still clinging to the battlefield even in death? Man, that story was long and dumb. A real, real zinger. Or so the story went. What do you think? Get a bit of a chill? Okay, um... Ew! Why did you do that? Please, don't. Oh, sorry about that, forget it! What? You're gonna cry on the way to the bathroom. Only on the way to the bathroom, though, that's weird. My bad! Oh, I have a better idea. Just never speak again. Just don't tell any more stories. Huh? Yeah, I, I got it. Makina throws her empty juice box into a trash can and starts to patter away. As usual, she leaves as quickly as she arrives. But this time, after walking about three meters, Makina stops on the spot and turns back to me. What's up? Oh, huh, what? Okay, this got very deep very fast. Life after death? Huh, I can't say for sure since I've never experienced it firsthand. That's not what she was asking. If you believe in it, then maybe there is. Or maybe there isn't. Life is hollow and meaningless. In the army, there's a popular story about an afterlife exclusively for soldiers. What? It's a story you'll find in the armed force of pretty much any country, in pretty much identical form. If you believe an afterlife is waiting for you, it'll be... I'm sure it's something like that. You're welcome? I didn't- he didn't say anything helpful. Whatever. Bye-bye. With those words, she runs off, this time without looking back. I don't think I said anything particularly interesting. You never do, buddy. Hearing words of thanks naturally lightens my mood anyways. What a dingus. Drinking up the remaining oolong tea with a gulp, I throw the empty cup on a trash bin and walk off towards our classroom for the sixth period of class. Well, thank God we're out of that flashback story thing. Whatever. It was a nightmare. There's a subspecies of woman disgruntled by an excessive kind of helplessness. The burning desire to take care of other people's problems. Well, this is already off to a great start. Within a few days of entering this school, I had a rough idea that Suo Amane fit this busybody woman classification. Don't you mean large woman? But I have to admit I wasn't expecting her to extend her meddling to me quite so quickly. 
Am I supposed to inevitable we run into each other a lot since we live in the same dorm? It seems like she's coming up to me every free moment and playing the big sister. Why is she echoey? This room's not that big, she shouldn't be echoing. I wish she'd put herself in my shoes. It's not even ha easy having to politely shoot her down every time. Yeah, man, that must suck having a girl who cares about you. What a fucking nightmare. Uh. Okay, stop. Not wasting any time, are you? I'm not sure how she got the idea in her head, but lately every time a break begins, Amani's been clinging to me from behind. Oh, that's actually pretty cute. Okay, it's something else. Then forcefully pressing her oversized lumps of breast blubber against me as if to say, check it out, I'm the big tits character. The way they droop just a little is very popular with the enthusiasts. Look, you're heavy. Remove your chest flab from my head. Wow, what a ladies man. He hates everything. He's the worst. Don't give him attention. On the contrary, I'm something of a fan. You are a sex criminal. I hate you. Okay, this is great. Amane always just knows what to say. To be fair, Yuji is kind of the worst, so like, he kind of deserves whatever comes his way. I'd prefer that. What? If a man hits on me, I can hit on him. With my fists. How progressive of you. What do you want from me? If you have something to say, then spit it out already! Yeah, wow, that's great. She fucking matches up with the, uh, fucking... Narration, that's the word I'm looking for. She fits the narration perfectly. Thanks, sis, but I'm a big boy now! Could you please get lost? Okay. Well, this... This is exceedingly uncomfortable. I... I hate this. Stop that! I'm a dainty little thing! I'll break more easily than you think! Kill him. Just do it. Just end this now. <laughs> this is so fucking weird. They say a snapping turtle won't release play prey from its bright... from its bite even if lightning strikes nearby. Okay. Amane is a similar beast. She's a turtle? Once she clings to me, my only release is the sound of the bell. This woman kept a pet cat. I'm positive it would go bald from stress within a week. You realize that she's clinging to you and asking to help you? Like, man, how bad is your life? I can't imagine. I'm not confident my own hair will be safe if I allow these assaults to continue. It's about time I get my message across, even if it requires taking a somewhat harsh attitude. Amane, that's about enough. Just so I begin to shout, Sakaki appears with spectacular timing. Oh, cool, they're gonna play without me now. Bye-bye. I know, bye-bye. Yumiko grimaces at Amane's response. Her glare is expressive. I. who are you supposed to be? Wow, yeah, that sounds really hard. A projector? Was this, the 1930s? Oh, yeah, wow, don't want to forget about that. Oh no, don't end this scene, we're having so much fun. Don't mind me! She just wants an excuse to stab me again, which, like, I get. Okay, Amane's the greatest. She's my favorite, I love her. She finally released me! What a noisy large woman! Oh, and now it's sad! Stop! No, this was a sweet moment, and now I'm sad about it. What do you mean? Wow, how big of you. You're gonna accept her for who she is. How noble. What a noble sacrifice. You make it sound like you're familiar with her past. They went to school together. Have you known Amani that long? I don't. That's barely any time at all, honestly. But sure. So Mani wasn't always like this? I, yeah, no, I'm just asking for her because I like to waste my breath. Fuck off. I just don't understand the woman. Why does she drape herself all over me like that? Dude, okay. I'm gonna tell you a little something about ladies. She wants that D, though. Just fucking give it to her. I, have you met Yuji? There's no way in hell that's gonna happen. I did! 
and then I blacked out. Just the other day, having stopped up on necessities for my new dorm life at the local supermarket, I was wandering leisure around the area in front of the station. Are we flashing back? Why? I, don't call me that! Wow, Yuji's a whiny little bitch. I hate him so much. Yeah, Team Amane, she's got it on lock. Spare me! I can't get any cuter than I already am! Wow, conceited much? All the other girls will get jealous and start picking on me! Yuji's a fucking jackass. I hate- God, I hate him. What does that mean? Like who? This conversation is a train wreck. What the fuck are we even talking about? When I point at the plastic supermarket bag dangling from my hand, Wow, she's like a regular Sherlock Holmes here. Don't just go through it! Wow, Yuji's so sad! Tissues, batteries, and mayonnaise. I guess he's preparing for a night in. He's gonna, you know, self-serve, as the kids say. Look at you! Don't just start rifling through my bag! If only there were some way I could stop you, but there's not! I don't care. I wasn't asking for your advice, actually. Just... Whatever. Whatever ends this conversation faster, you know? You're as knowledgeable as always. Do you wander around comparing prices all day? Also, it's not hard to figure out where is cheap, because you buy it, and then you look at your receipt, and you go, Oh, that's cheap! Hmm, she's got an impressive devotion to economizing. I felt definite admiration since my master was the sort of wild woman who bought things without even looking at the price tag. Didn't you guys live in the mountains? How the fuck did she have money? What? Are you telling me your groceries? I don't need your groceries. I need my groceries. And I already got the batteries and the mayonnaise, so I'm set, baby. Well, I'm not that caught up on the price. I appreciate the thought, but I just want a store that's convenient. A convenient store, if you will. It's all well and good to wander around looking for bargains, but when you consider the increased effort and consumption of time involved, getting too picky frequently turns into a loss. Yep, it's a trait among guys. We don't care about prices. That's write that down. That's real. That's right. I'll be going. Bye-bye. No, I'm gonna go walk into traffic. Fucking kill me. Yeah, I, I did finish my shopping. She's adorable. Oh! As soon as the words left her mouth, the money was standing by my side, firmly grasping my hand. What do you think you're doing? Being adorable. Just roll with it, Yuji, my dude. You're cock-blocking yourself. What is wrong with you? This, of course. In demonstration, I raised the hand Amane had gripped, or rather captured, her fingers entwined tightly with mine. What am I? A kid who won't go home unless Mama pulls him there? Okay, whatever you're into, dude. I've got to admit, I don't remember acting quite that adorably, so I'm very interested where you're coming from here. I'm being weirdly defensive. And petulant, I know. I know, I don't know either, dude. Still gripping my right hand tightly, Amani raised the forefinger of her other hand against her lip and racked her brains for an answer. Oh, God, wow, that's... I mean, it's, I'm not really into that, but, you know, role-playing in general, I can get into that. That's, it's something. It's a start. Oh, is that it? If it's role-playing, I guess I have to play along. <laughs> Yuji, please stop. Okay, that laugh was also very weird. I thought I did a bad job. Did you really think I'd say that? Off! I forcefully yanked my arm free, shaking off Amane's grip. Dude, be not. at least pretend to be nice. Clearly. If you think that puppy dog face will make me act nice or out of guilt, you're very wrong. Don't flirt in public, that's a rule of mine. Or in private. And don't talk to girls, because they're scary. Look at that, she found the one loophole. Stop twisting my words! That's you who very much implied it was okay in private. The point is, I can't think of a single reason why I should hold hands with you other than for fucking. I mean, that is a compelling argument, actually. You should address that. It's not answer the question why you want to hold hands. Yeah, you get her, huge. Wow, the music's really fitting this dark reveal. Huh, some kind of obsessive compulsive disorder. What sort of accident was it? That's okay, sure. The hell? 
I feel like she's like medium joking. As she spoke, Money took my hand for a second time. Joking? When did the joke start? Oh, this is irritating. Take the left at least. I can't calm down when someone's got a hold of my dominant hand. Yuji, god fucking damn it, I hate him so much. He's the worst type of person. Let's just hold hands and be adorable. You're allowed, Yuji. Just let anything good happen to you. Don't... You're gonna complain like you're living in the mountains still. Just be cool. Why get friendly with me? I'm literally the worst, and I talk like this, and I'm a whiny little bitch. Probably. You know what? Honestly, he probably didn't have friends, because he lived in the mountains with his master. Hard to say. Didn't have any. Okay. It's almost sad if it wasn't Yuji. Because he's scared of women. I wouldn't say I don't. I just want to understand your motive. That... Okay, yeah, that scans. Why not? We haven't answered any question, but let's go. You're a weird one. Yes, she's the weird one for wanting to be friends. She makes a compelling argument, actually. Okay, yeah, they're all fucking weirdos. I'm going back. Aw. Having moved to my left as I requested, Amane didn't mess around any further. On her way back, she calmly acted her age. Holding hands really did seem to be enough to satisfy her. Dots did run through my head. Considering it's only a day since we met, she's bizarrely friendly. But still, as she's a member of her class full of special cases, despite her relatively normal facade, Amane must have her own unhappy circumstances. This hand-holding may, well may well have some meaning for her. Okay. I don't fucking know, dude. I feel like I didn't really learn anything. I also don't know why that had to be a flashback. But whatever! On that note, I think I'm gonna draw this episode to a close. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you liked that, don't forget to like, subscribe, be sure to next week for more whatever the fuck, Fruit of Grisaya with yours truly. I'll see you guys then.